uh, happy to be here this morning and share with you. We don't know you, you don't know us, and we want to just share what is God doing through us uh, in Argentina. You can see, you can, I can tell you, I am not uh, American. Uh, I am Argentine, uh, and I, I want to share a little bit of my testimony, you know, what my wife Julie and our, our children, uh, Caleb and, and Eliana. A little bit of my story, you know, like everybody want to see kids, you know. That is a picture when I was, I don't know, maybe Eliana's age. I don't, even I don't remember, but it, uh, I am that picture. I am the little one of three. I have two older sisters, and my dad and my, my mom there. And I want to tell you a little bit, to so you can know me a little more. And when I, I grew up in a church, you know, the church is my home. And like <laughs> I say, uh, when I have six years old, I received Jesus as my savior. And, but when I came to younger or teenager, I started have to take a back decision to make me walk uh, far away from the Lord. And until the point where God said, enough is now, I call you to be my child. And, you know, every, every parent, they dis, discipline the, the, when you are not good to behave. Yeah. And that's what it, I feel like God's uh, telling me because I don't want to, you know, follow Jesus. I, I, I want to follow Jesus like in my own time or what I think, and the Lord uh, called me for going. I was born in Mendoza. Is uh, I can show you later a picture when we are uh, in, in the displays. I have a picture of, <coughs> and they, my parents, and they don't know what they do with the church and say, okay, we need to pray for you know. It's a, it's one of the. Um, children of the elders, and you know, you need to be <laughs> example. And they don't know what they they can do with me, and they start sending me to Buenos Aires, and it's a, a camp where they one of the day they present if you wanna be studying the Bible. And I said, Wow, this is great! It's look. And they send me maybe for two or three years. And I say, okay, if the Lord wanna for me go and study, they can do everything. I wait, you know. But it's not how did that work? And like I say, you know, it's, and I, I hear from God say, enough is enough, you need to go. And I understood. When God called you. They make you, you understand <laughs> that you need to go. And I say, okay, I'm not resisting anymore. I go and study the Bible Institute. But I have my conditions. I say, I just wanna, wanna go for one year. I don't wanna be a missionary. And if I became a missionary, I don't want to be missionary in Argentina. <laughs> and the last one I say, I don't want to marry a foreigner girl. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because you know what are the results. <laughs> I just not studied for one year. I studied three years and I stayed maybe 15 years in that place. And I I was a missionary. I started. Um, uh, you started out on staff. And I, I started on staff, and then I became a, a missionary where in Argentina, <laughs> and that is where I met uh, my dear wife. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of a foreigner, <laughs> um, as 
as Pastor Jason said, um, uh, my mom is his, um, his, his mom's sister, and my mom and dad were also missionaries in Argentina. I'm, we're, later we're going to be telling you about where we live, where we work now. I was born in the city that we are now working in. And um, this is me as a little baby um, with my mom, my dad, my grandparents on my dad's side, and my older sister. And um, the Lord makes no mistakes. And I was born there as a missionary kid in Argentina, but I was born with very bad heart problems. Um, so badly that my parents could not continue on there. They had to leave Argentina when I was still a very small baby um, to get me health care um, here in the United States. And um, I always said I ruined my parents' missionary career. But the Lord was not done with, with them or with me yet. And um, let's make sure. I say it was because of my heart that I had to leave Argentina. But my heart eventually led me back to Argentina. I went first on a, I went to the Word of Life Bible Institute in New York, and I went on a missions trip where I became acquainted with a school that needed English teachers. And later, when I graduated from college, I went um, back to Argentina and I became an ESL and Bible teacher in a little Christian school um, there in Argentina. So everything kind of went in full circle. Praise the Lord. So um, that was where Israel was. <laughs> so that's where we met and we got married. And um, that is how, we, how I ended up back in Argentina. And it wasn't um, long after that that we felt the Lord that was calling us to go um, to northwestern Argentina, where we are now. Just to give you an idea, because some people are not good with geography, I'm sure it's not your case, <laughs> but where is Argentina? Argentina is um, the southern one of the southernmost countries in South America. It is uh, the second largest country. It's very long. We're telling uh, Jason and Tanya last night that it is as long as the United States is wide, so it's very big. And they're way up, tucked up in the northwest corner is the province of Santa. And that is where we are. We have uh, Bolivia directly to the north of us and Chile uh, directly to the west of us. Uh, we are within a few hours of both of those two countries. So um, just kind of tucked up there. And this is this is our church that we work with. Um, we, we do this picture because um, we don't show you when we get there, when we start, but there's more people coming, and that is good. Uh, it's a, a very a little, you know, couples, not too many, but I we don't say it's, it's crowd, but <laughs> little by little, people came to our church, they know to the Lord, and they want to be involved in, in every, you know, um, meeting we, we, we did, it and, and that's great, because that's what the result we want to see. So as we well said, one of our main areas of ministry is to the local church. And one of the things that we said was we didn't want to go and work with, you know, big churches. We wanted to work with little churches that, you know, that want, needed help and everything. And that's how we kind of um, come to be in this church. And one of my areas of ministry is music ministry. Um, I, I saw Tanya with, with other people here with the with the uh, music ministry. And um, something that happened is, um, so all of these people, you see me there in the back singing, and all of these other people are all teenagers that probably three, four years ago, they had never picked up an instrument. And um, and yet we had, they wanted to have that desire to learn, and they came and they started learning instruments. We had a music teacher coming every Saturday to teach these kids instruments, and now we form a worship team. And um, one of the greatest things about it is just to see these kids growing. I say kids, they're, they're teenagers, including Colette Club is a drummer. And, um, and every Saturday morning, not only do we have our, our worship team practice, but um, these kids are all taking um, uh, turns giving devotions and sharing what the Lord is doing in their life. And to see them growing little by little, like the first girl in the black um, sweater, she was just a little kid when I first came here. I could see her grow in the Lord and make and come to know Christ as her Savior and now be part of the worship team. 
excuse me, and sharing what the Lord is doing in her life has been really great. Um, also, um, well, right now I'm not because I'm here, someone's taking over for me, but I'm also in charge of the women's ministry down there. And every Thursday afternoon we get together and we have a women's Bible study. And we um, this year we're going through the books of Colossians and Philemon. And um, every year in November, we go to a retreat, a women's retreat in a camp that's kind of up in the mountains, about an hour and a half north of us. We are, because we're on the western side of the country, we are kind of in the foothills of the Andes. And um, it has been great. This was our retreat last year. I'm hoping that almost as many will come this year. This is just our church, of course, for many other churches um, that were at this women's retreat. Um, but we've seen women come to know Christ as their Savior in the last couple of years and have been growing in their faith. And for our church, this was a pretty really big group of women that went um, there. Another uh, ministry that our church has is children's ministry. Um, we tried uh, for a couple of years to have a Sunday school, um, but we just didn't seem to be able to get many kids on a Sunday morning. So what we've been doing is having a Saturday afternoon children's program. And we made the mistake last year because we have so many activities going on every weekend, not just in our church, but you know, fellowship activities with other churches. Um, that we said, well, one Saturday per month, we're not going to have children's program just because we have so many other activities to attend. Well, that was a bad mistake because always after the Saturday that we didn't have children's program, there would be half the kids. So uh, this year, our children's ministry leader said, okay, by no means are we going to cancel a Saturday. If even if just 10 kids are here, rain or shine, which means a lot because most, well, I wouldn't say most people, but a lot of people down there do not have cars. And I would say the majority of these children, these are completely from unchurched families. <laughs> um, they're in the neighborhood and they come. And so since we have started doing that, where we said we're not going to cancel children's program by any means, we have been averaging around 80 kids every single oh. Saturday afternoon. And um, like I said, these are, the majority of them are not children of people that are coming to our church. They are kids from the neighborhood that sometimes come walking, and um, they are hearing the gospel, and they are growing in their faith. And um, we even, uh, last year, we even took the kids out to do their little their own little evangelistic activity, where they just walked around the neighbors with the, uh, the neighborhood, of course, with the leaders, and <laughs> passing out tracks and just saying to people, Jesus loves you. And um, so there's Eliana with some of her little friends. Um, they're getting ready to go out and just to share the gospel with people um, in just a very simple way. Okay. And like we say, uh, I like when they invite me to preach in another church. We travel sometimes in an hour and a half or more. But relationship, you know, you're thinking all right that you're going and, and bring a lot of blessing to the people, but you get blessed more than what you think. And always says, after that, you know, you, you, want, you want the fellowship, the, the relationship that you make with these people, and we love that. We love that, uh, talking and afterwards, and, and you know, uh, helping to, uh, sometimes they ask him questions, and, and even, you know, when you are in, in, in I say in country and not Well, you just kind of like it's just a big uh, general service, general meeting. You not yeah, interact. You can't interact as you cannot interact as well with people um, as you can when you just on an individual basis. And this is what I say for me. That is, is I excited for for that. You know, even <laughs> sometimes when you don't have all the answers, but you help him to pray and and you know. Uh, take good uh, decisions. And also sometimes we get, like, the women have the retreat, the men also, we, we have that too, uh, the fellowship in, with other churches, and this is one of the activities they invite us, and like Julie said, it's almost a few people, they have cards. Working cars. That Working cars, and also... From one place to another. Yeah, and also they... they they, they don't have that uh, possibility to drive, you know, or have the vehicle in good condition to travel in another uh, city. And for them, there are sometimes the only 
uh, time they get, get out of the city. And we take a couple uh, guys from our church and, you know, just going, stop in the gas station, get a, a, a mate, not coffee, but it's like coffee here, <laughs> and just talking in, in the trip and, and that's basically. For, for me, it's exciting, and, and you can see they're enjoying uh, all day, and every every Baptist, um, what do you call, uh, reunion or? Baptist meeting. Baptist meeting. What do they need to be in between food? <laughs> because food brings people, <laughs> and it's good, it's good. Also, sometimes, <laughs> We try to encourage, uh, we do an evangelist campaign, and we don't have a big team yet, but we try to um, uh, get with other churches and be involved with them and say, look, we want to go and support you and, and also encourage our people going to, you know, to the plaza or the park uh, when it's a big day. Uh, that is a children's day. They, everybody's outside. Everybody and and we 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 like to encourage our people and doing a bunch of campaign. I would say we should point out that something we didn't mention. So we work in a in a Baptist church. Um, my husband is one of the elders there, and but our church is part of a fellowship of Baptist churches that are spread throughout three provinces. We have um, it's probably means nothing to you, but we have the province of Pupui. It's the north of us. We are in the province of Salta. And then we have Tucumán, which is to the south of us. And back when my parents were missionaries, um, those missionaries planted a lot of these churches. And so these churches continue on and growing. And um, some of them are larger churches. Some of them are really small churches like ours. And um, But they get together for a lot of <coughs> meetings and fellowship time. And, um, and <coughs> so that's sort of, those are some of the activities that we're going to and he's talking about. Perfect. No, not explaining, uh, that. not explaining that because there is a lot of uh, maybe question after that that you can make us and understand maybe more uh, all the ministry we're doing and why or where. And this this picture, uh, like I say, I travel um, like an hour and a half. Uh, this is in San Pedro, in Cujuy. Uh, there are pastors and leaders of other churches. We, we decide to start a, a study Bible uh, uh, centers. Center. Seminary Study Center. Okay, Bible Study Center. Bible Study Center. Uh, but always, when we're going out, we're not going on our own. We always want to be involved with the local churches or you know, leaders <coughs> of that area. And, and this is one of the ministry we still we still doing it uh, i still teaching from here now everything after the pandemic everything is online and that is a good way you know no matter how far you are but you can still doing some uh kind of this uh, uh teaching uh, courses and this is one of the, the the leaders of that church and this is the result that we want to see you know a lot of people um finish the course and we give a certificate. It's nothing, you know, for, you know, big value, legal value. The legal value. But for me, finish a course, uh, uh, we, we want to uh, keep in courage uh, of these people uh, for all the churches around uh, that area in mm -hmm. San Pedro. Another one of our ministries, mostly in the summertime, in our summer, remember that our, our seasons are reversed. So our summer is December, January, and February. Mm -hmm. And mostly in January and February, we're, we are very involved in camp ministry. Uh, we talked about the retreats that we go to with the women. Well, um, there is a kind of like a Baptist <coughs> camp that's up, again, an hour and a half north of us in Hawaii. <laughs> it's kind of up in the mountains. And we go up there a lot in January and February to uh, work in the camp. And sometimes we do a little bit of everything. A lot of the times they call us up to do like the program and the games, and we have a lot of game materials and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, this past January, they asked us to come yeah. up 
for children's oh, ministry or for the children's camp. And um, we were able to not just do the games, but they asked me to tell <laughs> missionary stories. And I love that. And it's something very close to my heart because one of the ways that I first got interested in missions was through my grandmother telling me missionary stories. And, um, and to be able to come and tell these children um, <coughs> missionary stories of Amy Carmichael and, and um, many other well-known missionaries. And of course, I told the most interesting uh, missionary stories, you know, where the, where the missionary has the Bibles hidden under the seat of the car and the soldiers are checking the car and everything. And it was just so cool because these kids would be running around all day and, and everything. And they'd come to the evening meeting when I would tell the story. And you could just hear a pin drop. They just love that. And to be able to hear kids afterwards come up to me and say, I really like that story. You know, I think I'd like to be a missionary someday. I was like, yes, that's what this is all about. This is what um, I want to, to inspire kids to, you know, the Lord calls them to do that. Another area of ministry is visitation. Just trying, as Israel said, sometimes in, in a big meeting, you can't really get to know people and talk to people. Um, and so one of our areas of ministry is just getting into people's homes. And this particular family, they used to be our neighbors. And she knew the Lord beforehand, but um, he, he actually came to know Christ through my dad. My dad, when he goes down there, he does not just come to visit us. He comes to evangelize and he will be, um, walk the streets and, and give out um, tracts. And he gave a track um, to this man. His name is Gustavo. And they were having a really hard time in their marriage and just um, basically a broken home or on the verge of a broken home. And the Lord just totally turned this family around. Um, and they have grown in the Lord. They have since moved to another city, but we continue our relationship with them and we visit them whenever we can. Lots of other people, too. And just kind of in a way of closing, um, I wanted just to share a verse uh, really close, um, very quickly with you. Um, in 2 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 3, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may, may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And um, I know I shared briefly, and I think Jason said something um, a little bit about my story was being born with heart problems and um, and struggling a lot as a child, just medically wise. And then I remember being eight years old and I needed open heart surgery. I know their, their daughter's gone through that too. Needing open heart surgery. And at the time, my parents did not. We actually came out here to Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, but my parents didn't have the money to be able to do that. And um, I remember so many people friends, family, the community coming together and helping us and helping my parents get the funds so that we could go and get me the heart surgery that I needed. And I was comforted in our affliction. And obviously my husband and I, we're not in the medical field and we have not come gone down there for that purpose, but the Lord has brought into our path time after time, people who are going through something medically that they, because of the lack of funds, they cannot get the medical care that they need. Argentina has a public health care system that in, maybe in some countries it works. In Argentina, it's a broken system. It does not work. And people can wait literally months. And in cases we've known years to get surgery that they need or medical care that they need, that if they just had the funds, they could go to a private doctor and get care right away. And um, so the Lord has brought people into our path that are going through things that we've said, which is because in U.S. dollars, it's not that much. We've just been able to say, OK, you know what? Go and see that cardiologist. And, you know, we're going to be able to cover the, the cost of the consultation. And we share this picture because um, this is Lucia and Cesar. And Cesar, we call him the patriarch of our church because the church literally started in his house. Um, and in the beginning of May, he had a major <laughs> stroke, which by God's grace, he survived it, but he needed physical therapy to be able to recuperate, um, you know, his being able to walk and to move his arms and everything. And um, and he um, he didn't have, you know, the, the public health system did not include that, or they didn't really, not very good. 
and we were able to use funds so that he could have physical therapy. And just thinking of how people helped me when I was a child, being able to turn around now and be able to help other people, that's really, that's really special. Um, also, another way that the Lord, something, again, not on the radar, not part of our main ministry, but little things, extras that the Lord brings us to do is through our camp ministry, we became um, associated with a children's home. And this is a Christian children's home. They have, it's one home divided into four houses, big boy, little boy, big girl, little girl. They have probably 20 to 30 kids there. And uh, something, these little boys always come to our camp and they're absolutely terrible behave, but they're so cute. And um, these little boys have been through a lot and they had never, um, getting to know them, we found out they had never been to a mall. They had never had a happy meal. They had never done any of those things that so many times little kids like to do. And we were able to um, surprise them one day by having their, their house mothers bring them to the mall and let them get a happy meal, let them go to the arcade and play some games, and just show them in a very practical, tangible way, just the love of God. And um, I think my husband's going to share some verses just to kind of close our time. Now I'm going to translate, that's why. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 si ahora yo hablo en español. He's going to speak in más. Spanish because it's hard for him to preach in, in English. Puede, so. Pueden ver que es distinta la forma de hablar. So you can see that I, I speak, yeah, I, I, it, it's different when you're preaching. And so now the people who speak Spanish will know if I make any mistakes. Pero quería, quería compartir algo realmente que tocó mi corazón cuando estuvimos en el último campamento. I want to share something with you that really touched my heart um, when we were in the last camp, um, the last time we were at camp, which is in February, Donde conocimos esta gente de, de, de hogar. where we got to know um, these kids from the home. Y le dije yo a uno de los que estaba encargado de una de las casas, porque está dividido en cuatro casas. As we said, it's divided into four houses, and I was talking to one of the house parents of one of the houses. Y le dije, ¿cómo podemos estar ayudándote un poco más intencional, no solamente orando por vos. And I said, how can we be more intentional in helping you and not just be praying for the children's home? Y él me dijo, en este momento no tenemos que comer. He said, honestly, right now we don't have a lot of food for the kids. Y realmente tocó mi corazón. And that really, eh, that really broke my heart. Muchas veces nosotros estamos eh, Quejándonos so many times we are complaining cosas. about so many little things. Pero tenemos un plato, porque sabemos que vamos a casa y tenemos un plato. But yeah, we go home and we have a meal. Entonces, eh, realmente pudimos, gracias a Dios por las personas que and ofrendan. And we are so que, thankful to the people who are part of our ministry. Que and pudimos, we, pudimos comprar comida. And we had a, an offering, and with that we were able to go and, to the grocery store and buy a bunch of food. Y, y bueno, compramos de todo, ¿no? We bought a, a variety of everything. Fideos, carne, um, pollo, leche, aceite. Uh, uh, noodles. <laughs> uh, noodles, meat, um, chicken, beef, um, you know, milk, you know, what, whatever you would get when you go to the grocery store to feed a bunch of kids. Y cuando lo repartimos en las cuatro casas. And we divided up into four, um, into four. So we go to a, a mount of the four houses that are there at the home. Con lágrimas en los ojos. And they had tears in their eyes. Ellos estaban agradecidos porque éramos la respuesta And they said, de oración para ellos. And they said, this is an answer um, to our prayers. Entonces, quería compartirles un versículo en so, primera de Pedro, 221. Um, I wanted to share a verse with you from 1 Peter chapter 2. Que dice, pues para esto fuiste llamado, porque también Cristo padeció por nosotros, dejando un ejemplo para que sigáis sus pisadas. Uh, verse 21, it says, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Y como compartía recién and mi esposa. As, and as 
I was just sharing when I talked about the people with medical problems. El Señor siempre nos suple. The Lord always supplies nuestras necesidades. For our needs. Siempre venimos con un montón de problemas. We always go through a lot of trials and we have we always have lots of problems. Y oramos para que el Señor pueda solucionar. We pray for the Lord to to help us and to and to solve the problems. Y, y acá dice pues para esto fuiste llamado. But it says for this you have been called. Y están aquellos que pueden decir eme aquí yo quiero eh, Responder a este llamado. And we have been called, and there are those who want to say, "Here am I. I want to respond to that call." Y muchas veces nosotros nos encontramos al principio con estos problemas. Pedimos al Señor que nos ayude. And so many times we go through problems, and we ask the Lord to help us. Y a través de lo que nosotros aprendemos. And then through that trial, we learn things. Para poder consolar a otros. So that we can help others. Si, si tuviéramos tiempo de ver las bienaventuranzas, ¿no? Bienaventurados los que consolan porque serán consolados. Um, you know, when you look at like the Beatitudes, you know, where it says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And, y, and we have been comforted. And we quizás can... muchas veces no sabemos de quién podemos llegar a ser confortados, pero quizás de estas mismas personas que nosotros estamos trabajando con. And so many times we are comforted by others, and then we can comfort those who we are working with. Pero es lindo porque dice para esto fuiste llamado. But I love the part when it says for this you have been called. Y el ejemplo nos dio el Señor. And Jesus has given us que, His example. Queremos That's ser, the example of all. Queremos ser como el Señor. And we need, we nos need queda, to be like Him. Nos queda grande la camiseta. And uh, we will never, <laughs> never get to be like Him. To, pero, to all that he is. Pero de poder a él. But we want to try to be like him. ¿Y nos más and a when are we most like Jesus? Damos. When we give, when we help. Y la que por and, la que nos dan. and we're just so thankful for the opportunity that we have um, to be here with you today. De poder compartir lo que el Señor está haciendo. And just to share with you what God is doing. A veces, muchas veces pensamos que, uh, misioneros vienen a buscar dinero. <laughs> so many times, um, churches are not very open to missionaries because they say, oh, they're just all, you know, looking for support and everything. Pero, but you know what? Podemos tener todo el sustento que necesitamos. But a missionary can be fully supported. Pero si no tenemos personas que oren but if we nosotros, don't have people that are praying for us, no we don't have anything. We're, we're lacking so much. Entonces buscamos personas que, que estén interesadas en poder orar por, porque son personas que necesitan como nosotros. Como Because, and so um, we, we look for people to pray for us as well. Cristo nos llamó. Jesus has called us. Muchas personas nos, nos preguntan, ¿y, y, pero ¿por qué vuelven a Argentina? Si a lot of times es, the, the, the Argentines. Bueno, no, no, no es, creo que ustedes pueden, más o menos, podemos comparar con, con Chicago. Oh, yeah, he says, uh, Salta is a lot like Chicago in some ways. But a lot of times the Argentines down there, they say, well, you guys went to the United States, why on earth did you come back here? Y, y realmente, realmente no hay nada mejor que estar en el centro de la voluntad de Dios. Así que eh, queremos agradecerle porque a través del llamado que nosotros un día dijimos que sí. We want to thank you because through this calling that one there was a day years ago when we said yes to that calling. Estamos aprendiendo en el, en el camino a ser obedientes como Cristo. Lo we, are, we are also learning to be obedient just as Jesus was. Porque Él dice que padeció por nosotros. Because it says He suffered for us. Él entregó su vida. He, he, he gave His life. Aun cuando no quería pasar por ese tiempo difícil. Even though it was such a hard time. Porque si nos preguntamos nosotros, ¿quién le gusta pasar por una etapa por un periodo de tiempo I don't think would have to go all of that. pero el Señor nos permite para que nosotros podamos cre crecer y confiar en Él and so that we can trust in him. 
Porque dice, ejemplo para que sigáis sus pisadas. Says, that we can follow and that we can... Obedeciendo a Dios, um, no nos va a librar de, de, de las partes difíciles. Does not mean that we go through hard. Does not mean that we will not go through hard. Pero podemos hacer como Cristo que confió en el But Padre, que nunca en Jesus. ningún momento lo abandonó. And we can trust in God and we can keep going. Así que so, quería simplemente compartir that. cerrando esto y agradecerles por and thank you. porque sé que van a estar orando y thank you for, vamos a empezar a tener una mejor um, relación de inviting us to be here and for praying for us and we're looking forward to getting to know you more Thank you, uh, Israel and Julie. Before you sit down, I just want to uh, to pray. Uh, can I invite uh, Brother Rick to come forward too? Thank you, Rick. Um, so let's let's all uh, can we just kind of uh, pray? You want to reach out your hand toward Israel and Julie. We just want to pray for them and their ministry in Salta, and for uh, also their family and their safety. And for their children, uh, we're very thankful for uh, Eliana and Caleb, and uh, just really, really blessed uh, that you're a part of the ministry with your parents. So just pray that you. Uh, so let's just uh, let's just pray, and we'll give thanks to God for Julie and for Israel. God, thank you so much for the testimony that we've heard today. We praise you. We thank you for calling the Zalazar family to this important work in Northwest Argentina. We thank you, God, for the work that others have done before them in plowing the fields, so to speak, and in planting the seeds and seeing the harvest. Thank you for how uh, a generation later uh, the harvest is still being reaped. We thank you for the gospel-preaching, Bible-believing, Jesus-worshiping churches there and the witness that they have. Thank you for the ongoing witness of the surrounding neighborhoods. We praise you for all that we've heard today from uh, the local church ministry to uh, men's ministry and women's ministry and uh, children's ministry and a wonderful movement of God happening on Saturdays with the neighborhood children coming uh, just uh, by the dozens. And we thank you, God, for, for what you are doing and so many other uh, wonderful acts of God, uh, your grace and your mercy and your power being displayed Um, that I, I know they could have been here for a long, long time sharing so many different things. We pray your blessings upon this family. We pray your blessings upon them while they're here in the States as they travel from church to church, putting a lot of miles on the car, getting safety on the roads. Give them uh, great favor as they present to various churches. Thank you for those who are supporting them and those uh, like us who are considering making that step. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to bless Uh, this family and your gospel ministry through them. Thank you, God, that you are at work, always at work around us, not just here in Chicago, but all over the world, in Salta and beyond. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.